Hi, my name is Asterios and I'm here today with Shayut, Amin, Sakib and last but not least, Dong. Today we're going to rock your world with explosive knowledge from the leadership and management module. The definitions of leadership can be defined in many ways. One example is Roch and Belling who said that leadership is the process of influencing the activities of an organized group towards goal achievement. A good example of leaders could be Adolf Hitler, Steve Jobs, Napoleon, Barack Obama, or maybe King Jong Un. From what we have learned from this module is that a person can be a leader without being a manager and a person can be a manager without leading. So the question is what distinguishes a manager from a leader? According to William Spriggle, management is that function of an enterprise which concerns itself with the direction and control over the various activities to attain the business objectives. A good example could be Asterios. Supposedly, Asterios, as a leader of our group, cares for the group's performance. In the meantime, he motivates, inspires and builds communication channels between the group members. On the other hand, Asterios, as a manager, sets objectives, organizes, controls and measures the development of the team's performance. Wait a second, do you see anything in common? Oh right, they were all men! But during a movie session of this module, we found out that women can also be great leaders. From the Made in Degener movie, we saw Rita O'Grady, a newly radicalized union member, started a movement at the Ford car plant in 1968, which was fighting for equal rights in payment and working conditions. From that moment on, women have made up more than 50% of management and professional positions in the USA. In addition, we discovered there are three types of leadership styles, charismatic, pragmatic and ideological. As an example, Abraham Lincoln was a charismatic leader who had an ambition to unite all kinds of ethnicity in the USA as well as he was ready to sacrifice himself in order to inspire all Americans. Nelson Mandela made symbolic decisions which were consistent with his visions of creating a united and powerful country with a harmonic existence of diversified population. Based on the knowledge of this module, we were able to analyze the change in orientated behavior. Looking on the management side, Kota, a leadership professor, stated that general managers develop agendas consisting of goals and plans to help them reach their job responsibilities. This module clarified that leaders are able to fulfill the same responsibilities as managers, although managers are obligated to maintain a formal attitude towards their employees. Based on Mitzberg's taxonomy of roles, it becomes clear that managers can also hold the leader role, which means that they are responsible for activities like training, directing and praising other people within the organization. However, as we live in the 21st century, we see more and more diversified workforce in the mature markets. These facts result in managers and leaders encouraging more respect for individual differences as well as explain the benefits of diversity for the organization. We have also learned some aspects of leadership and management through events we have attended. From the Intellectual Property Seminar, we found out that being an entrepreneur requires leadership and management skills and there are a couple of ways to protect our business ideas such as patents and trademarks. In order to be a successful entrepreneur, it is fundamental to protect those ideas. Followed by the second seminar, we spotted strong leadership skills from the lecturer. She showed strong determination on motivating and inspiring international students to take immediate actions for seeking jobs in the UK and abroad. Finally, this module has taught us how to motivate, inspire and manage people through leadership skills. 
Those skills are going to be the features that will transform us into the leaders of tomorrow. We approve this module and we wish that the future students will have the same opportunity as we did.
Hi, we're Team Mastermind. We're going to be reflecting on events hosted by Kingston University's KU Talent, which have shown to display incredible leadership and management qualities that have inspired many people. The events will explore the various elements involved in developing one's role as a leader and what exactly this will entail. Through these events, as a group, we have all been able to expand our knowledge in regards to leadership and management in context. One of the events that really moved us was the auto task networking for a successful career, which was led by a guest speaker, Natasha Grinstring. The guest speaker mentioned that networking is a method for establishing and building a long lasting professional relationship. Being a leader is the key to achieving an effective networks allowing leaders to share their ideas, experiences and information which support the development of their leadership and management skills. From this, we have learnt that these relationships are crucial in building a leader's portfolio of contracts, which enable us to meet other like-minded business professionals. The different types of networking also allowed us to identify the skills that require the individual to network without fear. This involves eye contact, confident body language and the ability to communicate coherently. All these qualities include an extrovert personality which facilitates conversations. This has given us an insight into the fearless nature a leader must possess to not shy away from challenges. Remember, it's about engaging with people. You need to stand out, be confident and ask questions. Another event that linked into leadership and management was delivered by the co-founder and editor of BBC Trending, Mukul Devichand. As a successful entrepreneur, he has demonstrated what it really takes to be successful. In response to a challenge of appealing to a new audience, he has identified the power of social media as an extra means of advertising. It takes inspirational leadership to commit and dedicate to one's belief in an idea well before it has been established. In the case of Devi Chand, he demonstrated leadership skills by taking initiative and leading by example. This is evident from the fact that he is both co-founder and editor of BBC Trending. As a leader and a manager, he is seen to get involved with the groundwork of the business, allowing for the decision-making process to be more effective. Leaders need to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. One thing that we have learned is that it takes commitment and determination to be an effective leader. It is also a manager's role to understand what the consumers want and to identify open markets that have not yet been exploited. Debra Chan has proven to do just this. As the first BBC YouTube account, BBC Trending has become the forefront of a well-respected news establishment, associating itself with growing audiences of social media. In doing so, this demonstrates that there is a lot of risk involved. In this situation, the BBC brand has been put on the line. Managers don't gamble, they take calculated risks. For our exciting journey of exploring the multiple attributes that a leader must possess, we have gained extensive knowledge on what we ourselves must take under consideration and develop in order to become the best possible leaders when it comes to management roles in the corporate world. KU Talent has allowed us to network with other students as well as many inspirational and motivational individuals that have utilised these events to share their success stories and the journey that they have had to undergo in order to get there. As a second-hand witness, we are able to learn and modify the way in which we think in order to not only become better at networking, but our personal skills of communication, decision-making and leading by example. Hi there, we're level 6 students at the Kingston University. We're going to inform you as a group 
what we've learned about leadership and management. In addition to our lectures, we've attended several Kingston University events in order to explore this concept. Leadership is an art of influencing others to understand and do things that needs to be done. We describe it as an art because being a leader, it requires time, dedication, motivation, and most of all, the patience. We will be looking at three different types of leadership. The pragmatic leader, the charismatic leader, and the ideological leadership. Charismatic leaders use inspirational motivation to influence their followers, to perform at high levels, and to be committed to the cause. Through positive goals and self-sacrifice, they communi communicate effectively to build commitment. Pragmatic leaders give rise to threats and opportunities in particular situations. For instance, they are likely to be more focused on operational issues rather than external factors such as global occurrences. Ideological leaders seek followers to share common or similar views. However, they could often be mistaken for dictators as they pursue similar views towards leadership. A good example could be Hitler and his aspiration to be respected and acknowledged for his work. <laughs> People with different leadership styles will tend to approach circumstances in different ways. For instance, if a business is dealing with a corporate social responsibility related issue, such as child labour, a charismatic leader would use emotional influence to tackle the issue, whilst a pragmatic leader would, would focus more on the effect of the welfare and the profits of the business, rather than the ethical issues. A good example of a global leader could be An San Suu Kyi, who is also a Nobel Prize winner. She gave up her freedom and life with her family in Britain to protest military rule in Burma. She also served two decades of a house arrest, which did not stop her from her determination. Furthermore, since her release, her political party has claimed dozens of seats in a parliament. Bono, who is the lead singer of YouTube, has become a world global leadership figure. He goes by the idea of real leadership is when everyone else feels in charge. He has managed to persuade global leaders to write off debts for LEDCs and really poor countries in the world. He has increased aid relief and also encouraged fights against AIDS, poverty and preventable diseases. Another good example of a global leader is Brenda Hale, who is the only female head of the Supreme Court. She is also campaigning for four more females in the Supreme Court, and she refers to herself as Miss Diversity. The following are examples of good leadership skills. It would be fair to say that focus on team interests and needs is one of the key elements in being a successful leader. Also, recognition, encouragement and inspiration is a great stimulus for a good working environment. James Kahn, who is a known Dragon's Den investor, was one of the visiting speakers during the Kingston University events. During the event, he shared his personal experience of being successful with fewer opportunities as he was young. Through ambition, vision and dedication, James Kahn has been able to build strong brand as an entrepreneurship leader. For example, this was emphasized during the 2010 floods in Pakistan, during which he volunteered to help restore people's lost homes, schools and encourage entrepreneurship. There are a few differences between managers and leaders. Managers tend to direct, conduct and delegate authority. In management, that tends to be subordinate and hierarchy, and a good example of this could be a retail manager. Leadership, on the other hand, can be found in any situation. So for instance, a leader of your friend circle or an international leader figure, i.e. a president.
Our conclusion to leadership is that it's measured by people that follow the leader. For example, how inspired, motivated and successful they are. Within the last two months as a group, we have attended a range of events which have discussed various aspects of the leadership and management in context module, resulting in an increased knowledge of leadership within the workplace and an insight into what being a leader really entails. In this video, we will convey what we have learned throughout the module, as well as insight gained from the guest speakers. In the eyes of the law, he was still a child. While 79.6% of pupils had attained five plus GCSEs, he left with none. Whilst the majority of kids were still living in the family home, he was not. He had left school and his family home with just £30 in his pocket and a world full of opportunities. He had an idea. And with our passion to make it reality, this is where his entrepreneurship process began. After evaluating his options, his only plausible solution was a broom cupboard. At £100 per week, his new office transformed an idea into reality. The Alexander Mann Group was established. Headhunting was predominantly associated with senior management roles, but he transformed this meaning and revolutionised the recruitment industry. This supports the burden hand theory of effectuation as he created a new concept with existing knowledge and resources. Implementing the pilot in the plane principle of effectuation, he used his acquired knowledge of investing in people when he stepped down and hired Jonathan Wright as CEO, inevitably resulting in the business being worth 130 million after just 11 years. Further successful ventures included the government appointing him as chairman of the Startup Loans Initiative, as well as participating in Dragon's Den as a key investor on the panel. His inspiring and successful story supports the effectuation side of the effectuation versus causation battle, as he began with his available means and generated an amazing outcome. Causation, however, begins with the desired outcome and finding a means of meeting the objectives. He is James Kahn. After following his entrepreneurial journey, it is evident that hard work and perseverance is crucial when following your dreams and building an empire. We learnt that entrepreneurs are very self-motivated and take calculated risks to create something different and succeed in new ventures. Taken refuge in the UK after the Sri Lankan war at the age of 15, after two years he managed to save enough money for a flight back to India. In order to study in his return from India, he saved up his money to study a degree in aeronautical engineering at Kingston University, then continuing his studies in pursuit of the Masters. He began working at Lysetel, a telecommunications company, and began to work himself up the ladder. He met his current business partners, and with ambition, he kept a high level of self-efficiency to work for what he wanted. In 2001, he founded Labara. The Labara Group has become one of Europe's fastest-growing mobile companies, with 5 million active customers, 1,000 employees worldwide, and operators in 9 different countries. By the age of 25, he was the co-owner, co-founder, and CEO of Labara, and he quickly transformed into a leading figure in the telecommunications industry. In 2004, Labara worked with Telfort, selling SIM cards for low-cost internet national service in the Netherlands. By 2009, working with Vodafone in seven different countries, and 2011, revenue hit 504 million. Weber defines the characteristics of a charismatic leader to include a vision or a mission, exceptional qualities and recognition. Whilst listening to his presentation, he shows many characteristics of the charismatic leader having positive future oriented goals, including his 2020 vision reaching out to 1 billion customers. Linking to the contingency theory by Vroom and Yeton, the decision making leadership model, he portrayed that the decisions he has made throughout his time, he has used a collaborative leadership style. Himself and his business partners have been using this method for decisions made at Labara. He is Yoganathan Rathisan. We have learnt the leadership role needs commitment and determination throughout every aspect and process to enable success for your organisation. You are one of the 6.4 million people in the United Kingdom, but are you part of the staggering 1.91 million without employment? Furthermore, are you one of the bright, intelligent and determined individuals with a degree currently unemployed? Your personal brand is the collection of your skills and personality that comes through in your interactions with others and the work you do. Individuals must understand that personally branding yourself means that you are marketing yourself in order to leverage your potential of acceptance to employers. Body language alone represents 55% of the message we are attempting to convey. Branding yourself involves mastering your body language in order to effectively portray a pers positive persona. Social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn are increasingly used by employers to pre-potential candidates. 76 of employees use Facebook during the hiring process to screen candidates. The number of people employed increased in the year ending 2014. Managing self within the global leadership competencies theory is crucial when building a brand as appearance, body language and attitude must be controlled within a leadership and management role. IES is crucial to ensure effective communication between cultural differences. Again, this is reflected by your pers personal brand and your ability to adapt change. Jeremy Todd, a cognitive behaviour coach, corporate trainer, 
He specialised in building personal brands for individuals to market themselves to employers. Following the talk from Jeremy Todd, it became apparent that everything we do in life is judged, especially when applying for jobs. Therefore, it's crucial when being interviewed that you are conscious of your body language, eye contact and hand gestures, as well as your voice and how you are answering the questions addressed to you. Use persuasive attitudes and words, remain calm, professional and confident and trustworthy throughout the interview. Throughout autumn 2014, we have attended KU Talent events and lectures that have taught us various leadership capabilities, such as determination, perseverance and enthusiasm, which relate to the leadership management in context module. 